Hey, good afternoon, Pool Player Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jason Bowman, and today I'm joined by APA President Greg Fletcher, and of course, the one and only striking Viking, Ava Mattia Lawrence. Guys, how are you? Good, good. Everything good here? Yeah, we're doing really well. Wonderful. So it's, folks, it's been a while since we've brought you one of the billiard spotlights, uh, and we're doing so today to talk a little bit about, of course, we've been very busy. One of the reasons we haven't been on for a while is we've had a lot of our leagues restarting, fortunately, and uh, that's required a lot of shuffling and moving, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of that today. So we do want to update you guys just on what's kind of going on with APA leagues around the country. About half of you have been able to restart, another half of you uh, still patiently waiting, and we'll give you an update on that. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what the experience is like when you do go back to league, Ava is joining us today uh, with her league operator hat on. We, you know, she's a Hall of Fame player, but she's also an APA league operator. So today she's wearing the the uh, league operator hat. She's going to talk about what her experience for her APA uh, league was like as she came back online and, and subsequently actually had to shut back down due to some COVID issues. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, we want to introduce you guys to a new campaign that we're doing called Play Safe. And um, play safe is directed to number one, keep our members safe when they go back to league, um, but also to try and keep our host location doors open. Um, you know, obviously the, in some states we've seen the government come in and, and kind of shut things back down. And, um, you know, we're going to try to avoid that as best we can, especially for those of you that have been waiting so long, uh, to play pool. So with that said, Greg, I'll start with you. And I think Steve will pull up a graphic for us, but I just want to talk a little bit about the, um, you know, what leagues currently look like across the United States. I think I had saw like 45% maybe of APA leagues had come back and another 40 some odd had, had not yet. Can you talk a little bit about that? You're muted, buddy. My apologies. There you um, go. I think, yeah, it, a couple of weeks ago we were around 45% and then, you know, obviously there were some league areas that had, uh, to take a step backwards as they did the reshut down when the, when the virus uh, ramped up in their areas, but we've consistently kept uh, more and more leagues coming back online. So I think we're approaching 50% if we're not a little bit over. Uh, yeah. Look at, they're seeing the, they're seeing the numbers right now, 45%, yeah. 156 leagues now playing again, 145 or 42% still postponed. That is originally from March. And uh, and this number is, is the important one. This is where we're going to spend a lot of time talking today. 45 leagues, 13% of APA leagues across uh, the network uh, that have had restarted since March but had to shut back down either because um, the government has closed locations where league play occurs or in some cases like Ava's, which we're going to talk about, is uh, you know, you, you've had some cases crop up that caused enough issue to where you can't contact Trace and, and, and you're not comfortable continuing because of the safety of the players. So I want to talk about both those things. But, Greg, if you would, just kind of continue talking a little bit about what restart has looked like for us. Well, it, it, obviously, it really depends on each individual area. The, the governors are, are kind of setting the tone for their states, but there's also local uh, municipalities, mayors, uh, local health commissions, stuff like that, depending on how those local entities are set up. That are that are kind of setting the tone for that, and and so it changes daily. Uh, I know that we're in close contact with all of the the, uh, the leagues across the across the U.S. and Canada, and so we are we are always looking to see what's going on, and and it's a never ending change for us, and we're and we're looking at that, and then trying to to do what we can to help uh, each of our of our league operators and 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 make the best decisions on how they can start up and and get play safe. Yeah, I know I've heard from a lot of our members in, in places that we, we counted 42 percent of the, the, the leagues that have not come back since March yet. And I've heard from a lot of players. I'm sure you you guys have heard from a lot of players, uh, maybe not so much Ava because her players have been able to come back. But, um, you know, frustrations with the local, you know, administrations and, you know, when when are we going to be able to play? APA has actually, where appropriate, has, has kind of done some government advocacy particularly in cases where like bars have been allowed to reopen, but maybe pool tables weren't allowed to be used. So can you talk a little bit about what, what APA has done in that regard? Yeah. I mean, that was really something that was kind of a surprise, you know, granted none of us have been through anything like this before. So it, it's hard to kind of anticipate anything. And then when we, when we started seeing uh, the green light to restart in certain areas, but then they would start to throw stipulations on, 
on pool tables or, or other, you know, activities inside a location, it really kind of caught us off guard. And we started talking about, well, but maybe there's something we can do about that. So we, uh, we started working with, with, our, with our staff, uh, especially those who have some, some experience with, with dealing with the government. And we started to do some what we call government advocacy for each of these areas where that we're having those very specific regulations, right? So we, we started writing letters and emails and contacting different uh, offices, governors, health departments, uh, and they all have different committees set up and there's dozens and dozens of people involved. And so we started doing what we could to try to help them feel better that, you know, hey, no, don't think of that pool table as a, as a toy. Think of it as a it's, a it's a real important part of our community. And, and it becomes a central point of, of a place where players can get together and blow off steam and, and kind of get get their mental heads back you know, together from being locked up for so long. And then you know, obviously we want to make sure that those efforts go as well as possible. So, you know, we started looking into, you know, how we could further accentuate those efforts as well. Yeah. And having kind of been part of, of some of that messaging, I, I mean, I know one of the things that we have touted in that government advocacy that you've mentioned is, you know, the ability for our members to be an example to bar patrons and uh, for our organization to utilize things, you know, like a pool table or cue sticks to, to follow the guidelines that are being set up. You know, they're telling us you need to be six feet apart. You know, in some places they're saying you must wear a mask. So, you know, one of the things that I know we talked to some of these different government entities about is, hey, let us help with this. Let us, if you're going to open back up, let's, let us, let us and our members work together to, to be a good example for others. And so I know that that was the hope, but maybe not exactly what we saw as leagues reopened. And I know that quickly became a concern and maybe you could just talk briefly about yeah. that. Yeah. So, you know, we were really happy to see leagues restarting and we were seeing pictures of people getting together and just seeing people, how happy they were and they were glad they were playing again and, and kind of seeing life kind of return to normal, if, if I can say that. But, but we also saw that players weren't exactly uh, extra, at least in the pictures we were seeing, they weren't exactly exercising all the best behaviors that we would hope they would do, especially when we're writing these government officials saying, Hey, Here's what we're going to do, right? We're going to social distance and we're going to wash our hands and we're going to quit doing this and quit doing that and we're going to wear masks and whatever. And, you know, we're making these promises to the to these politicians who control the ability for us to be open or not. And then our players, you know, maybe they just didn't think about it. Maybe they were just so happy that to be able to be playing again that they they weren't social distancing. Like they were taking pictures, you know, where they're hugging people or, or they weren't staying far away or, or they weren't wearing masks or any of those things. And, and we're like, well, this this is a problem because it doesn't take much for an or, for a government organization, for the governor's office, for whoever it is, to pop open social media and check us out and make sure that we're actually doing what we say we're going to do. Yeah, or for and, somebody to lodge a complaint, right? I mean, we yeah, and and when when you think about what's at stake, so if we fast, if we go backwards two months, you know, it's mid-April, everything's locked down. And nobody can play, and we're all kind of wondering what's going on. And if, simply, if somebody simply said, "Hey, if you'll just wash your hands and you know stay six feet apart and wear a mask, you can play," everybody would have done it. And so, and that's really kind of where we're at right now. And and that's that's the hard thing to to deal with because we we don't want to set ourselves back. We want to be able to keep the places where we play open. We want to be able to hang out with our friends and family. We want to be able to to shoot the game that we love. And and some of these things are causing it to not happen. We're, we're concerned about that. And we want to make sure that we do what we can because, you know, we, we consider ourselves leaders in the community, not just not just our league operators, but our players, too. We, we expect good things from these people. And, you know, we have a really great product that that really, I think, helps society right now in this time. I think it's so important and I think it's so needed because you know, being isolated is, is, is hard on people emotionally, mentally, and just being able to get together for a few minutes a week, an hour, hour and a half, maybe longer is, is worth so much to, to our customers and to, and to our players and uh, who, who we count as friends and family. Yeah. I think that, I think that isolation, like you mentioned, is, is one of the reasons we saw, you know, APA communities are very close. They're very tight knit. Um, so, so not, uh, not surprising to see people when they could come back out wanting to be together, 
you know, hugs and closeness and, and, and that's very much APA, right? Yeah. But, but in this case and, and with where things are at, um, I think we're going to need to adjust that a little bit um, for now because of, of kind of the environment we're living yeah. in. So I want to, I want to come back cause this is, yeah. this is going to lead into this conversation about this play safe campaign. And, and just where I think, I think all that really needs to happen is just some reminders. Hey, look guys, we do have to really think about this, you know, uh, before we act. So, but I want to talk to Ava a little bit because she's got a very interesting story as it relates to this. And, you know, her league was able to start Ava, when did your league? So you shut down in, in March as everything else shut down. You were able to, to come back initially with League Win. Um, I believe our date was June 1st. We came back uh, the first week of June. And, and this is Coastal Carolina APA. Coastal, Coastal Carolina APA, yeah. yeah, down from, um, you know, southern Myrtle Beach on the ocean up to Wilmington, North Carolina. So it's interesting when we've been talking about this, and I know we talked, uh, listened to you guys talk about the league, op with all the league operators as, as well. I kind of got hit with all of it, except for uh, the strict rule of wearing a mask, for instance, which I know goes on across the country. But we we opened up fairly quick. I mean, I closed down fairly quickly back in March because we didn't know what, you know, nobody knew what this was. And I knew some of the league operators had closed down and, the, the you know, every news outlet and all the, the briefings we got every day from the White House and kind of going, OK, what what's going on here? Saw the numbers go crazy. So I said, you know what, let's just take a break. Let's just take, a, you know, some time here and, and take a breath and see what's going on. And then we opened up again uh, June 1st. That was back in March. So then June 1st, we opened up and everything was fine, except a few of our locations, there was not a lot of social distancing going on. It was kind of like league as normal. Uh, very difficult for the owners of the location and the staff to keep the numbers where they need to be as far as because we were at 50% occupancy. So that made it difficult. Um, but most of them were, you know, social distancing and washing their hands and, and doing everything else, just out having a good time again. Um, and then we got one case that I knew of. And um, she did not, you know, hadn't played league for a while, but she's one of our players. And so I was informed of that and felt bad, but she was okay. And then I heard a couple of more later on. And, and that got to the point where what, what Kobe and I tried to do is ask them all to let us know if you've tested positive um, so that we can let the team you played know that you were positive. So they can go in to get tested or pay attention if they have any, you know, illness or anything like that. Sure. And and to social distance and and quarantine if if you know if they want to really follow the the rules that we've been given. And then it got to the point where I felt like I was calling because people play on multiple nights, and all of a sudden I realized I couldn't remember. Does this one play on this team too, and on league on Tuesday and on Friday? And I just said, okay, I just want to take a breath. I just want to take a breath because. For the main reason that South Carolina opened up like quickly and big. So um, I just wanted to take a breather and say, OK, maybe if we're not a hot spot or maybe they come, come up with the fact that it's not as bad as we thought something. So we took um, we were on for four weeks and then took, um, I guess it's, it's going to turn out to be about three weeks off now. Um, and so there's some makeup matches this week coming up that couldn't be played at the end because we're at the end of the session. And then next week, the plan is to start uh, back up. Wow. I mean, I find that pretty fascinating because what you're saying there is, is you have you have league start, you have COVID cases pop up. And, and here you are as a league operator, uh, effectively becoming a, con a contact tracer trying to, which is great. And I love that you would do that for, for your people. I think that speaks volumes. And I don't doubt that almost all of our leagues would do the same thing um, for their for their members. But I can see what you're saying. It, you know, you, you run into enough cases and suddenly the, the branches become too far reaching and, and you can't keep up. And so you had to you basically had to shut back down. And so as well, I just you, wanted you, to take a break. And, you know, and I told them we're not sh shutting, really shutting down. We're just taking a break. Let's take a break and make sure that the people that we know of have the two weeks at least to kind of get get past the, uh, you know the the danger zone or whatever it is you want to call it i mean i love our crazy people i love my players and my league sure. and and so 
you know, but I also love the fact that they want to play. You know, the majority of our players want to play. They can't wait to play. The people in North Carolina are going crazy because they haven't opened up at all and they really want to play. Yeah. Um, and, and so these are the players in South Carolina where we were able to open. We've done that. But, um, you know, in our locations, our locations need business. They were already shut down for so long. Some of them couldn't get any loans or anything. Uh, people need jobs. We have a lot of people that play in our league that are, you know, work in the and uh, um, as waiters, bartenders. Uh, they work at the hotels, whatever it is. But I mean, they need work, uh, yeah. work in restaurants. So it's kind of a fine line because God forbid anybody really gets sick in our league, I I be sick to my stomach. But at the same time, the economy has to go on, and life has to go on. And I've just begged them all to really pay attention to this because. We do have players, especially us who are in an area that um, that has a lot of retired people. We have a lot of you know people who are in that danger zone. You have the older people, you have people with underlying conditions, and they're choosing to play. And even if we don't have league, they still go out to the pool room or the bar and play some pool if it's available. So, um, you know, I tell everybody, we're here for you. As long as the government says you can be open, we're here for you if you want to play. If this is something, the step that you want to take and you feel comfortable, that's fine. But don't be part of the problem to where they have to shut us down. Right now, they've gone to where no alcohol can be served or, or consumed uh, after 11 p.m. So that has really cut into the time. You know, and, and, and you know, are, are the players going to be really respectful to the location? So they don't get shut down or a big fine by sneaking in alcohol or are they, you know, so it's really a team effort to, to really show each other some respect to not get other people sick if you are asymptomatic, asymptomatic and also help our locations from going under. Very simple. Just just help, you know, we love our locations. And I know our players do, too. Yeah, it's, that it's, was a long it, time. Sorry, I talked so long. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, I, 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 I got to agree with you though. The, the passion that we've seen for people wanting to come back, I think, has surprised all of us. I, I mean, I think we knew that that some people wanted to play pool, and we were going to try to find ways to make that happen where it was safe and, and in safe ways. But just the the vast majority of people are wanting to come back and play pool, which is great. But we have to find a way to keep everybody as safe as possible. And so that's going to kind of lead us into the next part of our conversation. You've heard Greg talk about some of the challenge we, challenges we've had with, with states that have had restrictions that have kept you guys from playing pool. You've heard Ava now talk about some of the realities when, when a league comes back and you know cases crop up and, and what can happen there. So what we've done is we've put together this campaign and it's called the Play Safe Campaign. And I want I just have Greg, if you would. I mean, you're, you're, this is your brainchild, buddy. Um, talk a little bit about the Play Safe campaign, and and then we'll get into kind of showing off some of the, the different things that we are going to do to basically remind and encourage members to be safe for them and their teammates, as well as to try to keep their locations doors open. Right. Well, yeah, I I I think that it is the the genesis behind this is there's got to be a way for us to to be able to do this and so that our locations don't close down and we lo don't all lose our opportunities to play. Right? Right. Okay. And, it really kind of caught and so I think it's super important that we focus on that uh, and we leave, uh, leave aside our own personal feelings, uh, maybe some political feelings, and we focus on just what's in front of us because we, I believe we can make a difference. And I believe that we should make a difference. And the 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 difference is it's going to be in our communities. It'll it'll be it'll be in our location that that we, that we play at. I mean, we might play more than one. We help. We definitely all have a group of friends and family that we're hanging out with, and we want them all to be well. We want them to be able to play safe. And so the I just wanted to kind of cast vision for everyone because I don't want to have to stay home. I'd like to be able to go out and do what I want to do. And and so regarding being able to play in the league. We, we want people to be able to play, but we want them to be able to do it safely. So that's why we started the, the play safe campaign. We, we, we just, we decided that there's gotta be something we can do to help all of us work together to make sure that, that everyone can play 
and remain safe. And then that helps all our efforts. It, it not only helps um, people stay engaged uh, in, uh, on our teams or in our in our divisions or, or in our or in our location. It, it definitely helps those location owners with their staff and and the, the responsibilities that they have. It also helps us uh, in that region or that city. You know, because the last thing we want that to do is for it to contribute. We've seen how insidious this thing is. It's it, it's it's irreverent. It, it, it doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care what gender you are. It doesn't care what race you are. It doesn't care anything. And it, we're, we're, all, we're all susceptible to it. And so I think that that really kind of helps it boil it down for all of us that we can all contribute, that we can all do what we can do. And so I'm, I'm kind of calling on, on, on the APA Nation, on the CPA Nation to, to step up and, and lead in this scenario. Let's try to help each other. Uh, now, I don't want is I don't want everyone to start turning into uh, people who are, who are who are picking on each other uh, for, for things. But instead, we're, we're trying to encourage each other. We're trying to make sure that everyone's doing what they can to stay safe, because then we get to keep playing. Because if we don't do this, then we're contributing to what causes us to not be able to play. So it is an either or kind of thing. But. I, I really just want us to try to focus on, and it's not, it's not just, it's not just this, right? It's not just masks, but it's keeping distance, right? And, and Jason's got some, some great things to, to be able to share some imagery that's going to be coming out. And I, I don't, are you prepared to, to share any of that to, today, Jason? We will. I, I, what I'd like to do first is, you know, we've talked a lot about the play safe campaign and we've talked yeah. about the why of it, yeah. but I know, I think Steve's got a graphic. Let's, let's show them, kind of the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about with this play yeah. safe campaign. There are, there are basically nine guidelines to this campaign. And the first one, let, let's skip the first one because I think it's where Greg was going and it's probably where we're going to spend some time. But um, some of these, some of these guidelines we have been talking about since March when leagues before leagues had shut down, which were, you know, uh, no handshakes right now. You know, it's just not a good idea. No hugs, no handshakes. Let's do a thumbs up. Let's, you know, say a verbal good game you know, salute, whatever you want to do to acknowledge your opponent is great. Let's just not let be touching when we do it. Uh, washing hands, right? We want to be washing our hands before we play our match. We want to wash our hands immediately after we play our match. Uh, good idea to have hand sanitizer at league night that you can frequently use. We are asking people to try to use your own, to only use your own equipment, your own chalk, your own cue, you know, maybe don't share the break cue. And if you do, if you have to share some equipment, make sure you're disinfecting between uh, usage. So you guys are not, again, sharing uh, germs and that kind of thing. Of course, we were talking back in March, if you're not feeling well, um, if you've got a fever, if you've got a cough, maybe if you just got a, a, you know, a runny nose and a cold in the middle of summer, maybe just stay home this week until we know what's going on here, because there's just, you know, it's just not worth it to risk your teammates' health, um, you know, when you just don't know, right? Hopefully it's nothing, but, but you just don't know. Uh, another big uh, thing we're recommending is uh, no lag right now. No lagging for break. Uh, typically, two players would line up at the at the foot of the table and shoot a ball down and see who comes closer to the rail, and, and that person gets to break. Well, for right now, that means we don't want two people that closely together, right? The nice thing about a pool table creates natural separation, right? It's seven feet long, and so you can kind of navigate around a pool table with your opponent without getting too close. But when you lag, that's kind of out the window. So what we're asking for now is you flip a coin as opposed to do a lag. Um, six feet of distance, if you can. Six feet of distance is generally the length of a cue stick when you kind of hold it out in your arm, right? So again, we have, pool has some kind of um, built-in things that help us keep distance, uh, the pool table, the cue stick, but we want to try to keep some distance between us and others, again, to try to keep people safe. And as Greg mentioned, it, it's going to be very important that we're courteous, courteous to each other yeah. in, in whatever safety precautions individuals take, whether that is wearing a mask, whether that is wanting to sit maybe at a table over from some of the teammates. Um, who knows? I mean, if somebody comes in there with gloves, hey, that's what they want to do. And we need to be courtesy, cur courteous of each other, not courtesy, but courteous of each other. Uh, and then the big one here, I think, and, and what I want to talk a little bit more about is masks. All right. And, and obviously this conversation is going on all across the country, anybody that turns on the news, there's some conversation about masks. I think initially our line on masks back as leagues reopened was that, um, you know, if you wanted to wear a mask, no problem. 
that that was your right to do and and we were going to kind of leave it at that that line seems to have moved considerably over the last couple months um where we now have i think i don't know how many states that have mandated mask usage we have a large percentage of leagues that have now been able to reopen that are required to wear masks either by their state government their local uh, mayor local ordinances or in some cases host locations that require them so uh, what we are saying as far as masks is if it is mandated in your community that you wear a mask, you need to wear a mask at league night, right? It, it's really important. And, and like Craig said, number one, we want to keep people safe, but also if it's mandated locally and you're not doing it because you don't feel it's appropriate, that location can be jeopardized. You know, they can be shut down because their customers are not following the rules. And we certainly do not want to have that happen. Our host locations have struggled mightily through this pandemic um, and it's not fair to them. So if if that if the rules are that you have to wear a mask in your community, that applies on league night as well. All well, right. And wearing a mask and, and or any of these uh, things, because we honest, it's not just about masks, but any of these actions that were that 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 really makes sense to us right here, a small price to pay to be able to enjoy yourself on league night and see your friends and family. It's just it's just really not that big a deal. Now, for, for those of you who, who maybe have some other thoughts about it, you know, again, from a from a philosophical or, or even a political perspective, I'm just asking you to park that right now. And let, let, let's just make it so that we're working together so that we can continue to play, you know, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to you. I, I'm asking you because the, it's real important. I think what League does for our society is it helps us to blow off some steam and it gives people some hope. And we need that. We need that as a country. I know Canada needs it as a country. And there, there's just a lot going on right now. And, and little things like that can help. They can really help and add up to, to, to people having that hope and, and something to look forward to. And, 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 it, and it really helps people to get through this season. So I think, too, I think one thing. Oh, yeah, I think one thing, too, to remember that as resilient as we are as people and Americans are and Canadians and, and all over the world, there are scientists working on this every day. This is not a, this is not a lifelong situation. No. This is not going to go on forever. At some point, a mask will be something. Oh, my God. You remember 2020 what it was like? But especially if it's required. But even if it's not, if that can help save one of your buddies. Forget about the, yeah, the politics. That's just crazy to me, whether it's politics or not. But if it's if it's even helps at all for me to save somebody else, why would I not do it? It's not the end of the world. But you know, in our area, you don't have to wear it. I would definitely suggest it. I've sent out an, you know e uh, email correspondence to everybody, suggesting to follow all the guidelines already that you put in place. But to me, it is not a lifelong sentence. No. It's just not. So if you're going to be out, if you don't want to play, you stay home. If you're worried, you're scared, you have really serious health issues that you're fighting, you know, then come back to APA when you're ready, when you feel safe and you feel good. But if you're going to play and you know there's friends of yours, that your buddy Tom has diabetes, let's help Tom make it through this without being one of the ones to get it. It's not the end of the world. So I'm with you on on the not taking you know taking the politics and all that out of it. Um, you know it, it, this thing might they might find in two months that it's kind of going away. Well, great, but we you know fewer less people died between now well, and then. Well, and, and I'm I'm definitely not telling anyone to to not have their opinion, uh, no, or, or, no. or exercise their freedom of speech or anything. I I'm a I'm a big I'm a big a, a big time proponent. Uh, sure. of our amendment, the amendments that provide us freedoms. And, and uh, you know, I, I and, uh, you know, especially uh, again, but there's, there's lots of people that, that have their, their, their dreathers. Right. And so uh, I'm not telling you to not have those. Uh, you know, I, I will stand with you all day long to, to exercise those freedoms. But I just say, as we're focusing on trying to make it so that we can play pool, so that we can have some, something that we can spend our time on. You know, I, I know like for me, I, I really miss going to the movies with my wife. That's just one of the things that I really miss doing. And I, I, you know, they're, even though they're open here locally, it's just not quite time, but I think that there is a way for us to do that, uh, you know, for, for going to locations and, and, you know, and so we're, we're doing our best and we need your help in order to, for us to make that a reality. 
Yeah, you, you made an interesting point there, which is like basically regardless of the way you feel about masks, right? If your opinion is you don't want somebody to tell you you have to wear one, think of it as you don't want to give away your freedom to play either. So yeah. if, if it's what you have to accept to, to be able to, to exercise your other freedom, which is to go do a hobby that you enjoy in a place you love being, you, you might, it might be a trade off for now. And, and I, so what I would want to reiterate here is we talked about areas that where masks are mandated. In areas where masks are, are not mandated, we are not requiring you to wear a mask but we are pleading with you to strongly consider it. All right, consider it for your teammates, consider it for yourself. And if nothing else, consider it for your poor host location who are just getting pummeled in all of this. And, you know, every new day, it seems like we hear about other, um, you know, states or cities that are shutting their bars down. And, and I feel for these people that are working there because it's just a constant roller coaster of, of trying to hang on. And it's not fair to them. So, you know, we, we have to come together in some way, um, somehow. And, and, and so I think the Play Safe campaign is the start of that. It's certainly, you know, it's certainly not the end of it. It's going to take all of us kind of pushing in the same direction, doing things, reminding each other, motivating each other, kind of the way that we've gotten to where we are through this thing uh, together, right? Um, but we're going to need to see more of that. And we're going to need to take a little bit safer approach as we go back to league so we can continue not just to play league, but to do other things that you want to do outside of your house, right? That are indoors. I think it's pretty clear now as we see things each day that, you know, if, if certain behaviors are not being followed by the masses, they're going to come along and, and shut things down again. And, and that's really what we're trying to avoid. And, uh, you know, in, in situations like Ava's where, you know, too many cases cropped up at the same time and she doesn't feel safe for her members to be at league. So they've got to pause. Right. You, you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So that is the play safe campaign. Um, what that means is we'll be pushing information through our social media that encourages these behaviors, um, whether it's wearing a mask, keeping six feet of distance, you know, all the things that we've talked about. And we'll continue to remind our members and we hope you guys will share that information. We hope you'll take that information to heart um, and integrate it into your experience. If you're fortunate enough to be able to, to be back to playing again, there's a huge segment of our population that are still waiting to be able to play. And I think if you were to talk to a lot of them, they'll do whatever. They'll jump through whatever hoop you make up so they can get back to doing what they enjoy. So for those of you that are fortunate enough, let's try to hang on to it as best we can by, by, by practicing good behavior and encouraging good behavior from our teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Well Anything said. else you guys want to add on the, the play safe and or any of that? Ava? You have anything? No, I think just, you know, it's just awareness and, and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I I've seen so many people like with the family spirit in this. And if there is somebody in your family that either has an issue, they have a, a grandparent or whatever. I don't know how much I'm not a scientist. I'm not a politician. I have no idea of how much the masks are going to help. I don't know how, how, severe cases are i don't know if the numbers are inflated i don't know if no more people are going to die or a hundred thousand more people are going to die and you know i have no idea of any of that i don't know i'm not a politician so i don't set you know how you have to react or rules or everything else all i know is if we can just just take our own opinions aside for a while and go okay fine we'll go with you for a while and we'll see what happens you know if i can save somebody or help somebody or not get it myself or whatever it is, or not get my favorite bar or pool room. The, the bars and pool rooms are already closing, especially pool rooms are really hurting across the country. So if you can help them not go under so that when this is over, we do have a place to play. So they don't put a, you know, a big box store there instead of a pool room. So yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just a very tiny thing to me to try to be aware of at all times, if you can. And, um, you know, I think it's great what you guys are trying to do. We're trying to do it um, locally in our area, too. And I know that this is a fight that all league operators, all players, all um, captains trying to keep teams together, um, locations trying to survive. It's it's kind of we're in the same boat, all of us. Yeah, I think it's I think I think it's really important. I think you said it really a couple of great things. One is I want everyone to realize that the, the people who own those locations have families. And they, they have and the people that work for those people, the, the wait staff, the cooks, the, the, the whoever. Right. They all have families and they need they need to provide. 
just like you, right? Empathize with these people. And, you know, we get to go and, and have a good time and play. Just know that that by us doing this and exercising this amount of care for ourselves and for our teammates and for everyone in our community is that we're helping all of us get through this. And that's that's what I'm appealing to. You know, it's it's not just about getting to play pool, but it's about this is our chance as a group to show what we're all about and 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 do a good thing. And so I'm asking, and, I, and just like Jason said, I'm pleading with you, do the right thing and be leaders and encouragers. Don't be naysayers. Don't don't give people a hard time. If they if someone chooses to wear a mask, you know, be happy for them and, and encourage them because they're choosing a right thing, you know. And if you choose not to, reconsider, right? And so I just I just want I just wanted to make this. This is really about getting through this with our heads held high, knowing we did the right thing. And when it's all over, we can look back going, man, I hope that never happens again. You know? So yeah, I think Ava said it well. She mentioned she mentioned it's a family. I mean, APA is family, whether it's your team, whether it's your league, your division, you know, uh, it's a big family in a lot yeah. of ways. And, and there's certain things you have to do to protect your family, right? We want to be able to get the family back together, but we want to keep the family safe. And to do that, we need to follow some of these guidelines. So uh, with that said, guys, we appreciate you tuning in. We hope that uh, what we've shared with you today that you'll take to heart. We hope you will play safe along with us. And uh, we hope to see you again uh, soon at, at league night, sooner than later. So for now, we uh, will say goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys.